These hens were once property of Wegmans food markets. We took this video just hours after we rescued them from the farm. One can only imagine what they are feeling in this new world outside of battery cages and manure pits. Maybe, after a life of neglect, they don't know what to feel. When we first entered Wegmans Egg Farm, we didn't expect to rescue any birds. But we came across some who were dying without food or water, and others who were in need of immediate veterinary care. And so a precious few came home with us. Though we tried our hardest to save every bird we brought out of the farm, some didn't even survive the ride home. Until we were there ourselves, we couldn't believe there could be a place like Wegmans Egg Farm. It's hard to understand what these rescue birds have been through and what all the birds we left behind are going through right now. But hopefully, by showing people what these animals are forced to endure in egg farms across the country, we can work towards a solution and perhaps get our message through to one company with the power to change. We're going to get started by introducing the CEO for Wegmans, Mr. Robert Wegman. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Hi, thank you. Robert Wegman recently passed the torch of his 89-year-old company onto his son Danny, but not before making Wegmans one of the most successful private companies in the United States. It has expanded from its headquarters in Rochester, New York, to other parts of New York State and on to Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and other areas near the East Coast. According to Fortune Magazine's annual review, Wegmans is the best company to work for in America. It's rare for a grocery chain to achieve a top honor like this, but to people who know Wegmans, it's no surprise. The Wegmans company motto is, every day you get our best. Wegmans Egg Farm is one of the many projects that Robert has helped create. At the time it was built in 1967, it was considered the world's largest egg farm. Wegmans Egg Farm produces eggs for all its store locations and currently has the capacity for 700,000 birds. Wegmans Egg Cartons carry an Animal Care Certified logo, which implies that their chickens are well cared for. This logo was commissioned by the United Egg Producers and is considered misleading by organizations such as the Better Business Bureau, which said that the egg industry should stop advertising its products as humane. We made it our goal to determine what Wegmans Egg Farm was really like inside. After we asked Wegmans for a tour, they tried to assure us that their chickens are well cared for. In their letter, they mentioned the Animal Care Certified Program. They say that stress levels are measured to ensure that their chickens are content, and that a veterinarian is called if there is a problem. They denied us a tour to their farm, citing concern about the spread of disease. We sent them another letter and followed up with a phone call, asking if there was any way we can see these chickens for ourselves. No one, including people within our own company, are permitted to, um, to go into the facility. It's strictly limited to people who must work in the facility. Wegman's policy does not even allow the heads of the company to see how these hens are treated, let alone customers like us. Therefore, we decided to conduct multiple undercover investigations during 2004. The video that you are about to see documents our findings at Wegman's Egg Farm. The 700,000 hens of Wegmans Egg Farm live for approximately one and a half years before they are sent to slaughter. In battery cages, hens do not have sufficient space to walk around or fully spread their wings. On our visits to Wegmans Egg Farm, we witnessed up to nine hens living in a space as small as a filing cabinet. They are forced to live on a wire mesh floor and are unable to perch or stand on solid ground. The hens are so crowded that they sometimes stand on each other. These conditions do not preclude Wegmans from using the Animal Care Certified logo on their egg cartons. For each egg consumed by a Wegmans customer, a chicken has spent about 25 hours in these conditions.
The cages of Wegmans Egg Farm are stacked three and four rows high. According to Wegmans website, the chickens at Wegmans Egg Farm are caged for their own well-being. Although Wegmans states that chickens kept in cages are not in contact with manure, at Wegmans Egg Farm this is simply not the case. The hens in the lower rows live in the excrement of those above them. Crowded conditions can result in stress and aggression between birds. Most large-scale farms try to decrease pecking-induced mortality by cutting or burning off the tip of each chick's beak, as this footage shows. Wegmans is no exception and uses a procedure like the one depicted here when the birds are 7 to 10 days old. John Gingerich, a representative of Wegmans Egg Farm, says that he sees little evidence that the bird suffers from this procedure. But we found some adult birds at Wegmans Egg Farm with severely trimmed beaks, and some with beaks that were completely malformed. Chickens with beaks like these have a hard time eating, and it is well known by the egg industry that some chickens will die due to starvation related to beak trimming. Well, I think that the industry knows that Americans do care about the well-being of animals, and they're trying to adopt a humane uh, sort of veneer uh, on their products and to associate humane principles and values with their product. The problem is the reality uh, and the rhetoric don't square. If an average American uh, saw what was going on, they would say, well, I don't want any part of that. This product obtained in this way is not something that I feel comfortable with. We started, you know, looking through the rows and it just takes a really long time to, you know, just to get over, you know, the fact that there's just so many birds. You can't look at them in individuals at first because there's just so many. And we're thinking, well, you know, I guess we don't see any corpses. We don't, you know, we don't see any hens that are stuck, and you know, maybe it's not as bad as we thought. But really, there was just too many for us to even, you know, start looking at them. And after a while, you know, you're like, oh, well, there's corpses everywhere. Why didn't we see that when we first came in? You just, it's just overwhelming. If you have 700,000 hens, I can't imagine you can claim that you're ensuring that all of those hens have access to food and water because those some of those hens are going to get stuck something something bad is going to happen and if you only have a few dozen employees at your farm and very few of those employees are responsible for taking care of these animals there's no way that you can you can pay attention to the welfare of these animals we're in shed number 14 of Wegmans Egg Farm. Um, we found a hen here um, who has her head wound around the bars of her cage. So we're just going to try to remove her and offer her some water. It was really, really hard to, to look at these chickens after they've been they've been trapped, and uh, you know we, we free them. They would have the, their necks would would have this like you know this line going down where the where the bar was was cutting into them, and it, it's just awful to see that. We found a hen who was stuck underneath the feeder bar of her cage. Um, we're gonna attempt to to free her from here. Like her tail is stuck underneath the wire too. That seems to be what's keeping her from getting out. We're gonna offer her some water. There you go. This is the hen that we had just freed and we're putting her back. These hens, they, they have no access to food or water, and they die. They, they die, I assume, from dehydration. And that's against the law in New York State. It's against the law 
to prevent an animal access to water. We didn't even think that she was stuck. We just thought she was sitting in her cage, you know, sticking her head out, and we were actually going to leave her. And we decided you know, to take a look at her, and she actually was stuck. She had her wings stuck, her legs stuck, her tail was stuck, and she just had no way of, of getting out. So I took her out of the cage, and not only was she severely dehydrated, um, I mean, she was barely able to drink. She was that weak. You could just feel the bones in her. She was just so thin. Her abdomen was actually really swelled up with fluid. She must have had some sort of infection or had some sort of injury. You could tell that she was barely living at that time. We put her into the carrier and when we got back from the farm, um, she was already dead by then. At least she didn't have to die in her cage. Seeing corpses in the cages with live birds was shocking. I, it was something I never expected to see. Port Wagons Egg Farm, Shed 14, Animal Care Certification Number 120. And we've just come across a corpse in the cage with a lot of other chickens. Um, the smell is almost unbearable just from outside the cage. I can't imagine trying to live in here with it. So we're going to try to remove the corpse, at least so these girls don't have to live with that. It was surreal. Just, I couldn't imagine what life must be like for the hens living with that every day, stepping on a dead cage mate over and over and over, stepping on each other watching each other die. Um, it's just, you know something's really wrong there, that that can happen. A lot of the corpses that we saw, you know, obviously weren't ones that just died yesterday. They've obviously been there for quite some time, you know, decomposing in the cages. And some that we pulled out, you pull out the corpse and it's just covered with with all these, all these insects, and it's just really gross. And the chickens living in the cages have to live with that. Oh, there's flies all over her and bugs. Sometimes the corpses w would kind of fuse to the wire of the cage. They would they would be there for so long, kind of just rotting there, that you try to pull them off, and the floor of the cage starts pulling up along with the corpse. And it was a real challenge to remove some of these corpses. Uh, we, sometimes we found corpses of chickens who had had their head wound around the bars. Uh, and these corpses were in various states of decay. And it's just looking at, at, at trying to imagine that, that pain is just, uh, it was very hard. When you see so many corpses, you stop thinking about them as corpses. They're just these blobs. They are blobs of feathers. They're caked with manure. They're all dried out. And, and it's hard to think of them as chickens. But if you start to look more closely at them, you start to pick out the familiar things. And it's, it's very disturbing to look at one of these just messes at the bottom of a cage and to see a chicken's head in that just mess of, of feathers and manure. The manure pits, which run the entire length of the shed, and where all these birds are defecating into, they aren't cleaned out very often. They're piled many feet high, and that smell, that defecation, is just rising up. Each time we entered, we saw hens down there. There was at least two or three at any given moment. You could see a couple really far down the building, the ones you couldn't you know, even get at.
all of the manure piles had kind of a surface of these beetles on them that were moving and but we looked ahead of us into the shadow and there was a different kind of movement it was once we got closer we realized it was a, a hen she was basically drowning in liquid manure her whole head and her body were just her body was submerged her neck was covered in feces and she looked like an oil spill victim she was she didn't look like a hen at all melanie went over and carefully pulled her out and she was just gasping she her beak was opening and closing and she, we offered her water but she couldn't she 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 almost seemed like she recognized it but she couldn't even stop the gasping enough to get a drink of water she just she was almost gone then it felt like she was breathing but just barely we left we made the trip back and by the time we got back and got on the phone with the emergency vet to try to get her in and um, and save her life she was taking her last breath it was really sad that she had almost made it and then let go at the last minute but I was really grateful that she didn't die in that puddle she didn't go under and disappear We've done investigations at four different egg factory farms, and some we've gone back multiple times over the years, pre and post animal care certification to see truly whether or not any improvements were made in the welfare of these animals. And from the footage that we've gathered over the years from all of these different facilities, from the footage Compassionate Consumers has gathered, activists in Ohio with Mercy for Animals, activists in Minnesota, activists in Australia, in Austria, you look at all of these photos and you can just put them on a table, all of these photos, and mix them all up and you will have absolutely no idea which facility is which. The cruelty is inherent in battery cage production. There is no way to raise and care for a hen humanely in these conditions. It's so far removed from what is, what is natural to them, and they are denied nearly every instinct, every habit. I think I mentioned to you that we are a part of the United Egg Producers program. Mm -hmm. I, I did mention that to you, didn't I? Yeah, right. I have okay. your letter right here, yeah. Um, and um, we do um, adhere to, in fact, we're well ahead of meeting all of their standards. Um, for treatment uh, right. in terms of cage size and you know there's a, there's a rollout of, of when these standards need to be met and we've, we've in most cases have met the standards and surpassed them uh -huh. um, in terms of, of uh, the health and well-being of the animals uh, well we we have um, regular veterinary visits to the to the facility um, and just the our own expertise uh, in terms of the, those who manage our farm monitor that very carefully. I mean, you know, as I'm sure I said in the letter, it really, we have everything to lose and nothing to gain by not treating these animals well. I mean, an animal that isn't treated well doesn't produce. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so I've seen it at some egg farms, like there's dead chickens in the cages and things like that. Well, you know what? That, just our own food safety standards alone would not permit that. Uh -huh. um, you know, if that's the case, my guess is those egg farms are not very productive facilities. Uh -huh. You simply can't run a good operation by allowing that to happen. Uh -huh. um, it just makes no sense. So that alone, um, I can certainly assure you that all those conditions don't exist, mm -hmm. but if, we, if you sit before me in a meeting and I say that, uh, is that going to assure you any more than, than the conversation we're having right now? That's, that's kind of my question. Uh -huh. um, Do you know, when you say a vet visits, is that, is that regularly or only when there's a problem? Or how, do, how does a vet visit almost three-quarter of a million birds? Do you know how that works? Well, 
I'm not going to get into the details of our operation with you. You're an outside organization. For competitive reasons alone, we don't right. share the inner workings of our company. Right. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that level of detail. Today, the day that they're slaughtered is a release from a, from a terrible existence, from a living hell. And all for, if it was a, you know, all for low price food. Also that they could offer 99 cents a dozen eggs. As somebody who is buying food, you have the option of what kind of practices you support. That food exists for you. That food has been made in your name. And I think that people have the right to know where their food comes from. And I think that consumers who are educated can really change the way we do things in our country. Most people don't even know that this sort of stuff happens. And what we're trying to do is to give um, you know, the public this information so that they can make compassionate choices. Things have changed. And what I found in life is that a few people can do things that um, are from their heart and are doing things because they're right. Most of us don't. And what it really takes to make fundamental change is uh, an economic driven basis for change. People need to think about their own food choices and to make sure to take personal responsibility that if they choose to eat eggs uh, that the animals are not tormented and tortured during the process or that they simply abstain from eating eggs uh, entirely. Take that compassion Take that concern that you have because you want to support humane farming. You don't want to support animal cruelty. We can decide today that we don't want to support this practice, that we've seen something that we're not going to support and make a decision to boycott it. Pretty plain to see 
didn't all get the same hand and Those of us who came out on top I think we know who we are It's up to us to understand Hand to hand 